In general, I like things about most of the bands my audience raves about, but not always. Prepare the man for war. These are 10 bands that most people love, but I just can't seem to get into, and we're starting with Typo Negative. <sighs> So I saw a few channels doing this topic as a trend a few weeks back, and this was definitely the first band that came to mind for me. Ever since high school, people have been recommending them. My good friend who got me into a lot of bands that I still love today, like Dark Tranquility and Opeth, loved this band. So when he loaned me a copy of Bloody Kisses, I was sure this would be another banger to add to the pile. Nope. Instead, I found myself deeply bored and at times cringing internally. Look, mad respect and rip to the legend Peter Steele for his clear talent and pulling every guy goth girl in the tri-state area. And I can enjoy a moment here and there like the infectious synth hook on my girlfriend's girlfriend and the soaring chorus of Christian woman, but ultimately those deep mopey vocals and doomy guitars just do nothing for me. Next up is Silosis. What can you let go? What's the price of the soul? What's it worth versus gold? This is one of those bands I check out year after year when they have a new release and then immediately forget they exist a few months later. Who? There is absolutely nothing wrong with the music per se. In fact, I enjoyed A Sign of Things to Come when I listened to it this year, but even now writing this, I don't remember a single thing about it. Yeah, I don't know what it is. There have been plenty of singles I've actually quite liked and the albums are always solid enough. Clearly some talented performers in this band as well. For whatever reason though, it just never really fully connects with me on any sort of meaningful and memorable level. It's kind of an interesting phenomenon, really. Let me know down in the comments if you all have bands like that too. And by the way, if you're enjoying the video, hit the like button. Next up is Ahab. Of course there's going to be Doom on this list, in fact I could probably make an entire list exclusively filled with Doom metal bands. But I'm going to stick to the handful that I can understand why they're beloved, but at the same time that love seems to be just beyond my reach. On paper and in the artwork, this feels like something I should love. There's something about that horrors of the vast ocean aesthetic that really appeals to me. But then I switch on the music and I just want to go to sleep. Boring! Love those deep death bellows and when things get heavy, it's just that taken as a whole the ratio of the those moments to the ones that are more downtime for me is like 80-20. Once more, mad respect, just not for me. Then another big one here, we have Machine Head. This is perhaps the most obvious choice on this list given the many discussions I've had with the audience about them over the past two or so years. People genuinely love this band, and I'll attest that they are one of the big four of groove metal for sure. But while I love me the likes of Pantera and Lamb of God, I just cannot find love for Machine Head. Fantastic riffs, lots of solid performances, I just can't stand Rob Flynn's vocals and lyrics. Cringeworthy. 100%. His writing is just so corny, and while some singers can overcome that with a great delivery, Rob just loves to yarl, and it's like nails on a chalkboard for me. Even their fan-voted best albums like Burn My Eyes and The Blackening come off as incredibly mid to my ears. I've tried and I'll continue trying, maybe I'll even do a tier list one day, but as of now, I just don't see the appeal when there are so many other better bands out there doing very similar things. Next up is Tesseract. Another band I was reminded exists this year with the release of War of Being, but again, despite listening to it multiple times, I still had to look up even the album title because I couldn't remember what it was. Good album from a consistently talented band, they definitely build a mood and atmosphere, and they certainly aren't without their stronger points. I love the opening track, Natural Disaster, just the perfect mix of heavy and lofty atmosphere. Burden is excellent too. Much like Silosis though, I've just never really been able to put my finger on exactly why I don't fully connect with them beyond that though. It is what it is. I think the compositions are just too like drifty. It's like vibing music and that's fine, but I tend to prefer things a little bit tighter and more focused. A little more emphasis on riffs and hooks would be nice too. It's weird because most of my favorite albums of the year list tend to lean heavy on prog, but Tesseract just continues to be kind of lukewarm to me. Then we have Incantation. <laughs> Let 
Let's get some death metal in here. As made absolutely clear in my 90s death metal band tier list, I have vastly varying opinions on some of these classic bands. And while there are a few I could mention that I'm just not that into, none so fully encapsulates the topic of this video as incantation. I feel like over the years my opinions on all of the other bands have improved and matured over time, but not this one. I don't like it. Pound for pound, if you ask me, these guys have possibly the most boring discography of any of these early bands, with literally only one album I think is truly worth revisiting. Like, even by Death Doom standards, I'd much rather be listening to Autopsy. To each their own, but this one is mostly a gnaw from me. Then we have Bell Witch. Another Doom band with a truly massive sound and some incredible album covers that make me want to love them, but I just can't. Look, admittedly, the atmosphere is huge, and I can appreciate that, but you cannot make me sit through an hour and a half plus song. It's just not going to happen. You can't make me! I really don't know what more to say on this one. I look at those artworks, and again, I desperately want to dive into that world, and the fact that this is just a duo crafting such powerful soundscapes is certainly worthy of respect. But I just don't think this one is ever going to happen. For me. Then another proggy band, we have Nia Bliviscaris. Once more, on paper, this band sounds like everything I could ever dream of. Complex progressive song structures, big dramatic atmosphere, a dedicated violin player, what more could you ask for? So with that in mind, I dove in with these guys in 2014 with Citadel and was just kind of lukewarm again on it overall. I find it perfectly adequate. There was plenty to be impressed with, but ultimately the songwriting, especially in regards to the vocals, just felt a little clunky and half-baked to me. It feels like there are the foundations of greatness here, but with each new album from Earn to this year's Exul, I continue to walk away feeling like they still haven't truly hit their maximum potential yet. I'm definitely rooting for them and really every band on this list, but so far I'm just not that enthused. <sighs> then we have Sleep Token. Personally, I do not understand the love for this band in general, but there are aspects of what they do that I respect. As much as I enjoy classic black and death metal, hearing the same formula over and over again can get pretty stale. So mad respect to this band's willingness to experiment with a lot of different ideas from both the metal world and otherwise. Unfortunately, those ideas feel incredibly disjointed, and when they come together, fail to coalesce into something that actually feels unique or even particularly enjoyable to me. Once again, it's like Hosier meets Gent, and the vocals just feel so try hard and that's not even mentioning the lyrics write something bad Contrast that with a band like Zeal and Ardor or the Callous Dowboys that also use a lot of counterintuitive elements but fuse them together so much more successfully. And then we have Sanguis Sugabog. <laughs> I swear that the majority of the death metal fans I know have been sucking this band's dick since they hit the scene in 2019, and I just do not get it. Like, they're fine. To be fair, I feel that way about most modern day OSDM bands because it just feels like a retread of ideas that have already been done, well, to death, save for a few outliers like Horrendous and Tomb Mold. I will say that Homicidal Ecstasy felt like a step up with plenty of infectious grooves and swampy atmosphere, but overall I just get bored with the lack of any vocal variety and the songwriting strikes me as so incredibly derivative. Why would I listen to this when I can just listen to the original 90s bands that made up the same sound to begin with and I think did it better? Y'all check out this playlist for more fun videos and again let me know down in the comments what are some bands that everybody around you seems to love but you just can not get into but that'll do it for now flight of icarus and my dog barking in the background signing off <laughs> i will see you in the trenches <laughs>